I mean, this man, he, I'll say his story is one that we say came from grass to grace. Definitely. And um, there's always, the, I mean, he, he even put it out there on, on Twitter. He said, if you know where most of them are coming from, then you will not pray for them to fail. We're not praying for him to fail. He has made that big money move to Napoli, and most people are saying that he will fill in the shoes of Rashidi, the late Rashidi Yakini uh, for the Super Eagles of Nigeria, and he will do great things the same way the Drogba did playing um, out there. Look, at this, at this point in time, it's all about prayers for me right now. Mm -hmm. I think we need to pray for this man because with that huge price tag, number one, being the most expensive Nigerian ever, mm -hmm. being the most expensive transfer mm -hmm. for African footballers, footballers that yeah. is great. He's going to be the most expensive Napoli signing as well, being the most expensive um, player being bought from Leo Metropole as well. He tops um, Pep Nicolas Pepe's transfer fee by just one million, and that's simply fantastic. Look. Just one year at Lille, we saw the great things that he did do. 18 goals in 38 matches, mm -hmm. provided eight assists as well. Important Champions League goals. And then we saw how he began to integrate into the Super Eagles team. When they did go for AFCON, we saw that he was the second choice striker. Did not have a lot of matches to play. Although he did play the final third place match, he did well. But then with the qualifiers for AFCON, we saw the way he contributed with four goals in five competitive matches. Um, I remember the match against Lesotho, to be precise, scored two goals, provided two assists. Simply fantastic. He's good with link up play, knows how to hold up the ball very well also. And then, but that's something that he still needs to improve on. He will get better at it. And he's definitely going to get a lot of playing opportunity. I've already heard rumors that Andreas Mili could be leaving Napoli at the end of the season. Jose Calion is leaving already. And and that could provide room for Jeremy Boga, who is also good with link up play. So he's going to have a lot of great players around him who can make him better. Talking about the likes of um, Dries Mertens, Lorenzo Insigne, Fabian Ruiz. Um, look, they've got great players at Napoli, and also the Brazilian Alan. Mm -hmm. Look, they've got, he's going to have a lot of good um, teammates around him, and we only wish him the best, and we pray that he continues to fly the Eagles for the country. Of course, uh, we're praying that he continues to fly the flag for the Super Eagles of Nigeria, and all success should uh, be for him right now. But well, we have joining us this morning all the way from Plateau State, uh, we have a Flying Eagles Media Officer, Andrew Randa, on the show. Good to have you with us, Andrew. Uh, hello, Doka. Yeah. How's it going with you? I'm all right. Um, it's a great day. Uh, I'm happy. Today's my birthday, too. So yes. uh, you're the first person I'm talking to today. Oh, really? Wow. So happy birthday to you. And it's a great day to talk sports as well because we're all waiting for the big announcement from Napoli connecting with Victor Simon. So it's double celebrations for you. Absolutely. Um, I've been waiting for this for, for a very long time. Uh, unfortunately, Napoli have not made the announcement yet, but I've confirmed that Victor has indeed signed for Napoli. Uh, it's a fantastic thing for Nigerian football. Um, I put a thread out uh, a day ago about how I first met Victor or Simon five years ago when the Golden Eagles were preparing to go for the Africa Championship in Niger. Um, you know, I was also with the team in Abuja prior to departure, and I also met up with them in uh, Nyame when they played the first game against Niger Republic. And that was the first time I was seeing Victor or Simhan, you know, uh, play his first major international for Nigeria, the major tournament for Nigeria. And boy, was he good. Um, I'm telling you, first time I saw him was when he won a header against two Niger Republic defenders. And at that point, I knew that Victor was going to be very, very big. But I never knew he was going to be this quick. Um, so it's a thing of joy for Nigerian football. Um, a thing of joy for people like me that love youth football. Uh, I was with the under-17s unofficially, and now with the under-20s officially. So for me, it's, it's a blessing. I, I, I saw Victor when he was 15, 16. Now he's 21. He's moving to Napoli, biggest transfer for an African player, Nigerian player ever. You know, like we say in Nigeria, <laughs> God no go shame us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God no go shame us. And, but do you think the shoes will be too big for him to fuel? He has proven his worth right there at Lille. But do you think this big money move will be too big for him to fuel, talking about the shoes? No, if you know Victor, um, he's, he's a fighter. Remember when he went to Wolfsburg? A lot of us were not happy he went to Wolfsburg because we felt was the step at that point after the under-17s was a little too high for him. Oh. But, you know, he went there, he didn't really work, traced his way back again, uh, you know, went to Belgium, did this thing with Charleroi, and then, you know, up to Lille. And then he's all, all been on the ascendancy. So for me, I believe he has already learned his lessons with Wolfsburg. He's learned how to cope with pressure. How, he also learned how to be humble and go back and start from the scratch. So all the attributes that's needed for him to succeed 
Victor has it already. And the good thing is, Wolfsburg has prepared him for the big leagues. He's trained with a whole lot of players when he was with the Bundesliga side. Um, he's known the, the proper ways of training and all that. And remember, when he went back to Belgium, he had to build up. And that has shown that he's always going to be on the up and the up. So I think his time at Wolfsburg has really prepared him for whatever challenges he's going to face at this particular point in time. And if you hear the young man speak, he's, he talks like a 60-year-old, to be honest with you. He's very, very uh, confident of his abilities. He's always humble and willing to learn. And uh, the last time I spoke with him was the under-23 game against, I think it was Libya or so. Uh, Victor said, listen, um, I've learned my lessons. I'm going to dig deep. I'm going to dig hard. Keep a humble head. And if you do that as a professional player, the sky is not even your limit. It's, it's way above the sky. So I do not think it's a, it's a big shoe for him to feel. I'm really excited, and I can't wait for Serie A to begin. Victor is going to ban lots of goals for, for Napoli. Uh, Gattuso uh, is a coach that, you know, very, very, he loves people that train very hard. He's, everybody says he's ultra-defensive, but I think with guys like Dres Martins and a few other guys that have been there, Alan too, you know, um, he's going to get a lot of passes coming through. Uh, Lorenzo Signe to uh, Dres Martins, they pass the ball very well. All you need to do is just get the ball to Victor and he'll do the rest. So I really do think he'll succeed in Italy. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew Randa, for speaking with us this morning. Uh, thank you, Doc. Yes. I'm still expecting my birthday gift. You, 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 you caught me there because I was going to say you sent us the birthday cake, but yeah, a good one. But once again, happy birthday I to can you. I send you one. I'll speak to my madam and she'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us, Andrew Randa, and uh, for Victor Simon. We're wishing him well right there at Napoli, and we're expecting him to bang in the goals.